previous episodes, we outlined the creation of that thing, our solid state mic preamp. We finalized the audio circuit, built the power supply, and fabricated our circuit boards. Now, it's time to prepare the rack mount chassis to house all the electronics. For this project, we found an ideal one rack space chassis from Penn Elcom. It's inexpensive and very well constructed. We just need to punch and drill the front panel for the controls and the back panel for the power inlet and other connections. We used Microsoft Visio to create a mechanical drawing of the front panel with carefully measured locations for everything. We removed the front panel from the chassis to make it easier to work on. Using a ruler and square, the location of each control or jack is marked, first with the pencil and then with a center punch. Naturally, we start out by drilling small pilot holes before moving up to the correct sizes. A large stepper bit was used for the biggest holes. Doing the holes for the rear panel was a little harder, since the rear panel could not be removed. Once that was done, we laid out the interior locations for the circuit boards and power transformer, and drilled the appropriate holes in the bottom panel for those. This includes mounting a heat sink for the power supply voltage regulators. We made this from two pieces of aluminum bar stock. Now we needed to create the graphics for the front panel. There are a couple of ways to do this, but the problem is placing those dark graphics on a black panel. The first thing we did was sand the finish off the panel and followed that with a coat of olive drab paint. While the paint was drying, we created the front panel graphics using OpenOffice. At this point, the easier option was to print those graphics on decal paper, like we did with the circuit board legends in our previous video. Once the decals are applied to the front panel, a layer of clear coat makes them permanent. The downside is that the decals look like, well, decals. A much more professional look can be had with silk screen. In this case, we used a speedball screen printing kit. Their mid-level starter kit has just about everything we need to create the screen. Once the screen is created, the front panel can be silkscreened. Yes, it's a time-consuming process, but much better looking in the long run. Once all the graphics were complete, everything got a couple layers of clear coat for protection. Next, we installed the front panel hardware, followed by the rear panel. Then it was time to fire up the soldering iron again to install the interconnecting wires to the circuit boards. After securing the circuit boards and power transformer to the base, it was time to carefully solder the other ends of the wires to the various controls. Then we installed the front panel. Finally, it was time for the smoke test. We double checked all the power supply voltages, confirmed signal flow, and tested all controls. Time to close up. Now that thing joins the ranks of our other preamp projects. How does it sound? Well, all the narration for this series was recorded through one, and we've also used it on a few other projects. By the way, this project was featured in Radio World Magazine. We hope you enjoyed this little journey into audio design and construction. Be sure to check out the links in the description for all the hardware and software we used. We hope to see you again soon with another DIY project. Thanks for watching.